the last video on november 23 question paper 41 we have question 9 and 10 discussed in this video now coming to question number 9 green lace wings are a family of insects with more than 1300 species the common green lace wing whatever uh, is shown in figure 9.1 green lace wings have sense organ known as tympanal organs that detect sound The tympanal organ of green lace wings have evolved to detect the high frequency sounds that bats make when they are hunting. Bats eat the green lace wings. So you see, Allah has created every organism and then given them some protective mechanism to protect themselves from predators as well, so that the continuity of species. When a green lace wing senses the presence of a bat, it moves away or closes its wings in flight to escape. outline how the tympanal organ of green lace wings could have evolved by natural selection now what is the what are the rules about natural selection there's variation and there's a change in the environment and then some are better adapted so they survive and then pass on the uh, beneficial alleles to their offspring so the first point that you give is random mutation allows detection of high frequency selection pressures in bat by selection pressure is the bat because that the bat is the predator so selection pressure is the bat now the lace whatever what's their name lace wings those that detect high frequency from of uh, high frequency of the bats they survive so they don't get eaten so they are selected for they have a selective advantage now these which are not eaten by the bats then they survive and when they survive they reproduce and pass on the beneficial allele and those that can detect high sounds then increase in frequency in the population so most of the lace wings at the end of the day after many many years will all be uh, able to detect high sounds and their numbers will increase in the population in early stages maybe they were not so much, so many but as time goes by because the bat is the predator so the poor bat will not be able to eat them they will have to find some other alternatives they have to find other uh, insects which they can eat so outline how the tympanal organ could have evolved by natural selection whenever there's a question on natural selection remember these are the points you can give mutation selection pressure selective advantage pass on the beneficial allele and beneficial allele increases in frequency in the population these are the wording that you can use in any question on natural selection you can just close your eyes and write all these points and you'd get your marks for it so random mutation allows detection of high frequency selection pressure is bad don't get eaten so survive these reproduce pass on the beneficial allele those that detect high sounds now increase in frequency in the population you see we are talking of the entire population of this specific type so the ones now first there may be 10% now there will be 95% because they will increase in the population and those that have the high frequency detection allele will survive the bats then part 2 of the question when high frequency sound is detected the receptor cells in the tympanal organ stimulate the transmission of impulses in sensory neurons receptor sensory neuron describe the sequence of events that results in an action potential in a sensory neuron the first event in the sequence has been given for you calcium enters the cytoplasm of the receptor cells so there is a receptor potential there has to be a certain uh, number of you know sodium ions that enter which will generate and that's called so called the generator potential then vesicles of the neurotransmitter move and fuse with the presynaptic membrane then the transmitter released by exocytosis or you can just say exocytosis then neurotransmitter binds to receptors on sensory neuron then sodium ions enter depolarization of the membrane potential depolarization of the membrane of the sensory neuron occurs and the threshold potential if that threshold potential is crossed 
and this is also called the all or nothing law or all or none law either an action potential is generated or fired or it is not fired so there's a all or nothing response all or none law also it is called so receptor or generator potential if that is achieved then it will result in the vesicles moving and fusing with the presynaptic membrane then the neurotransmitter released by exocytosis then neurotransmitter binds to receptor on the sensory neuron sodium ions enter depolarization takes place and if the threshold is achieved and this is also called the all or nothing response then coming to the b part of question number 9 two species of green lacewing c carnea and c downnesi evolved from a common ancestor the two species have populations with overlapping distributions in parts of north america table 9.1 shows a comparison of the characteristics of overlapping populations of the two species so characteristic breeding months uh, june to september april to may uh, courtship song song with a regular rhythm song with no regular rhythm color light green dark green so they've given you the comparison of these two different types of green lace wig which has evolved from a common ancestor suggest how speciation occurred to produce two uh, the two different species of green lace wig very simple either you took uh, the heading was sympatric speciation or you said about allopatric speciation so it's one of them which you could have talked about if you said sympatric speciation then it would have different mutations then gave uh, phenotypic or behavioral differences uh, which gave uh, behavioral and isolation or separation and then inability to reproduce together this is also called reproductive isolation or genetic isolation or you could have said no gene flow between them so if they behave differently they stayed in a certain part of the forest and the others remained in another part then of course they wouldn't intermingle and they would not breed and then they would ultimately become two different species but if you talked of allopatric speciation then of course you would be give me all the points for allopatric speciation so allopatric speciation got you a mark then you said geographical separation or a barrier in the past then different mutations and different selection pressures another mark then gave phenotypic and behavioral differences and then the inability to reproduce together or you could have said reproductive isolation so you could have taken the answer in any any direction you could have talked of the sympatric speciation which has changed in the new syllabus because that's behavioral and ecological it is not from the the older syllabus was different so you do not give me the points of the older syllabus we have now discontinued i don't teach that anymore so either you said sympatric speciation or you said allopatric speciation but if you look at it there are some common points like mutations is common to both the answers different mutations or you said um, different mutate both of them or different selection pressure those you can write in both of them so be very careful in understanding sympatric allopatric is geographical isolation so you wrote allopatric speciation and you wrote geographical isolation you got two marks different mutations you got a third mark so in a way you could very easily get three marks for writing some sort of very general points so please remember this papers should make you very aware of uh, the type of questions which can come on a specific topic or a specific chapter so two different headings and two different topics so sympatric speciation different mutations gave behavioral differences which gave behavioral separation and reproductive isolation so these were the headings for sympatric speciation then the headings for allopatric speciation were nearly the same allopatric speciation geographical separation different mutations gave behavioral differences and reproductive isolation so practically the same points but of course the first the headings are different allopatric and geographical those were sympatric and different mutations so please everybody you need to remember these you need to just make a memory of it and uh, you have to remember them you have to remember these points you have to memorize them last question is usually a very direct question and it's like the the previous in the previous uh, syllabuses we used to have an essay question where it used to be a choice now they finish that so this is a very direct question and a very simple question medicine is defined as the diagnosis treatment and prevention of disease outline the different ways in which genetic technology can be applied to medicine with reference to name diseasing so genetic technology is what is uh, genetic engineering or recombinant dna technology 
So you said that you got a mark, then uh, then uh, we could use it as a drug or a treatment. Uh, we could use the GM bacteria or the GM yeast. So you can use that. You can use a genetically modified bacteria to make insulin. Why? Because we needed to treat people who are suffering from diabetes. Then you could make factor eight, which is a drug for hemophilia. You could make uh, adenosine deaminase, which is a drug for SCID, SCID. Then we could do genetic screening or genetic testing or diagnosis for, uh, we can detect BRCA1 and BRCA2 alleles, which, which uh, result in the, uh, the, the person suffering from, uh, can suffer from breast cancer. Then in Huntington's disease, we can uh, detect the number of repeats that we have. The more the repeats, you know, the early onset of the disease. Then on somebody suffering uh, who has cystic fibrosis in the family, then uh, we can detect the allele for cystic fibrosis. We can do genetic screening. Then we can do gene therapy. We can add the normal allele and somehow through the inhaler or anything, we can introduce it into the, uh, into the person suffering from that disease. So gene therapy then we can add the normal allele into cells and tissues of a person, or we can use to treat eye disease, LCA, Leber congenital amaurosis, and we can use it to treat skid. So any of those points, which is the, these are of course all syllabus points, and these are of course all the direct questions which can come on the last chapter, which is genetic technology. Now, this was a seven mark question, but there's something like 17, 15, 16, or even more points so as I always say is that when this sort of a question comes, just write everything that you remember and everything that you know. So because it said medicine is defined as the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of disease. Outline the different types in which genetic technology can be applied with named diseases. So genetic engineering got you one mark, GM bacteria got you second mark for to make insulin for people suffering from diabetes. Then you can make factor eight for hemophilia. Then you can make adenosine deaminase for skid. Then genetic screening, you can diagnose people with who have the allele for cystic fibrosis or they have it or not have it. Then you can detect the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 gene or the alleles. Number of repeats for Huntington's, cystic fibrosis allele, gene therapy. We can do gene therapy. What do we do in gene therapy? Insert the normal allele into the tissues of a person. Then to treat eye disease, this is again a syllabus. This is in the syllabus, this name, Leber's congenital amaurosis. Then we can treat skid. Now, besides this, there are a whole lot of points which were given as well to help develop uh, xenotransplantation, that is what? Antigen-free pigs or animals to source tissues, or we can make organs for transplants. Then we can use GM plants to make vaccines. Then we can use recombinant DNA or mRNA vaccines. We can make recombinant antibody technology. And we have different uh, recombinant therapeutic proteins for which we are, you can use for genetic screening and gene therapy. So you could have come up with a whole lot of answers and please ensure that these are the seven marks that you must get. You must get your seven out of seven. So you must uh, the way to revise for paper four is number one, go through all the syllabus points and then see which are the syllabus points that you don't know, then revise that from the book and then start doing as many paper fours as you can because in 2022, the syllabus changed. So you don't have to do many papers. I would only advise you to do the March, June, November paper fours and the March, uh, June, November uh, 22 and 23. And then 24 is, of course, we're waiting for the March paper four to come and then uh, you have your exam, inshallah. So all the very best. And I've completed this paper. I'll try to finish the other paper four, two and four, three as well. And best of luck and all the best from my side.